Sometime in the last century, I had started having the idea for Double Margaret, and it was a sort of confluence of um, my love of the marshes in, in Lincolnshire and wanting to make, a, I'd love to see them on film, and um, a love of fairy stories, and I don't really like those strong narratives of fairy stories. And uh, I fancied playing a, a woman, really. So you really wanted to be Margaret? I did originally, I, I wanted to be Margaret. And when you didn't get the, 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 the feature film away, you turned to a cartoonist, a comic writer, who you admired. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, I had a couple of, two big sort of pushes to try and get it made into a film, but it fitted no known genre. Mm -hmm. and, and probably the fact that I wanted to play the lead, leading lady was, didn't, help, <laughs> didn't help either. Um, so they, then it sort of settled and I thought, well, it could, I'd always thought it could be a graphic novel. Yeah. And as soon as I'd had that thought, I'd seen Dixie's uh, cartoon roll up, roll up in The Guardian. And I thought, that's exactly who I would get. So Dix, I... what was the pitch from Jim? Well, I, I just had a, a, an email out of the blue, really, while I was, uh, I was sat in the pub talking to somebody. And uh, it sort of popped up and, and I just said, some guy calling himself Jim Broadbent wants to send me a script. So I, I messaged him back asking if he was the Jim Broadbent, which uh, fortunately he was. And that was it. So he, he hadn't sent me the script. He just asked me whether I'd be interested in seeing it. So, um, and sorry to bother you if, if you don't sort of thing. So, so I did actually want to see it. And, uh, and it was marvellous. It was, you know, right from the start. I kind of saw it was something for me, or, you know, that it could have been written for me, really. Because it was very dark. It is yeah, very dark. it is very dark. And uh, I was completely taken by surprise. You all seem such a kind of sunny character and a man of a very <laughs> kind of optimistic disposition. <laughs> and this really is very dark and it could be anything from a witch to you know, refugees in Europe to alienation. Mm. It has all mm. these dark themes mm. in it. So wh what did you want people to read when they looked at this? Well, hopefully it's funny too. Uh, I loved the character as she started to grow in my head. I, I began to really like and admire and have sympathy for her as the story developed. And I think all those other things that you mentioned, the alienation and the, mm -hmm. and the loneliness and things, that was all just part of developing her and her story. And it, so I, never, I was never consciously thinking what I want to say about it. But you had, had originally had gone to art school, so presumably you were aware of Bruegel uh, and, again, Gret, mm. Mad Meg, mm. yeah. and also the Goya Witches. Yeah. Uh, and did, did you communicate any of this to Dix? I've always had those as references when I, whenever I've written anything. I thought uh, that is, uh, I'd go for the visual image first. Mm -hmm. So I did, um, when we started talking about it, I just told Dix the sort of influences I would, I'd been looking at. So how did you begin the process of working together then? Um, well, Dix works uh, in the early hours of the morning. So, so I'd, I'd arrive, uh, get up, to open my computer in the morning and there would be these wonderful images would have arrived and it was a, a wonderful way to start the day. Yeah, so I'd, I'd sort of work in kind of <laughs> complete darkness almost, sort of, it's just the, the time of day that's kind of uh, easiest where you don't get interrupted by various things. But uh, well, I've got a day job as well, so I, I draw nice things by day and Dark, dark things, things by, by night, night. Yeah. and this is very dark. Yes. Is it in a way a morality tale? I think so, yeah. She gets her wishes, which is you know, gold and love, and then, and then she has to decide which one, and it's uh, impossible for her. The thing is, what you have at the end of this book, and of course we are giving away the ending, that she goes underwater as if to drown, but we all know that, that not, might not be true and there could be a sequel. There could, there could be, yes. I mean, it's, uh, it's possible. I mean, it's where she came from at the beginning. She came out of the water at the beginning, and, and that's where she went at the end. So, it's no, no, who's to say she doesn't come out again? <laughs> but but when, you, when you were drawing it and you were thinking of the Lincolnshire marshes, and I know that Jim sent you particularly two images, one that I think is probably the first image in this mm. book, um, did you have in your mind's eye that area, or did you have a more European feel to it, that there were, this was perhaps something to do with? Uh, the breakdown in Europe, and we know, of course, from Bruegel was actually painting war paintings. Those photos that Jim had taken were, were the, my probable only reference, really. So I had about three or four pictures of you know, mud uh, and, a, and a few sort of little banks of, of uh, grass and things. 
and a, a sort of rotten wood. And that was the that was it. And I didn't kind of project it any further than that, really. I mean, that was all that she was aware of as well, I suppose. So. But there's also a quite sort of sex, dark sexual overtones as well, when she seems to get caught up by an animal, sorry, of an amphibian, mm. which is either a group of eels or it's some kind of weird octopus. Mm -hmm. This is all part of a, a hallucinogenic trip. Mm -hmm. and, um, this is, and I think that is uh, what has happened in um, the witch's uh, broomsticks. I think mm -hmm. a, a, certainly one version I read of that is that they, um, they, uh, the salve is rubbed onto the broomstick and then riding the broomstick it is ingested in some way and then there's mm -hmm. a, a trip which is then recounted and, then, uh, and on the trip perhaps they... Uh, Imagine they've met the devil. She also has a quite a distinct voice, and I wonder, did you hear that voice? I certainly, I spoke uh, when I was writing it and tried to see if I could make it uh, make it work, and thinking I would be playing it, and, and also thinking, oh, I'll, I'll, when it comes to the day, I'll be able to improvise around it. So this is a suggestion of what she might say. But words that I don't know, flit, frit, flitter, flitter mouse, which is a uh, old word for a bat, and uh, which is. And it, did she, in your head, was she speaking in a northern voice? Yes, yeah, so there's some sort of northern vernacular, yeah, and that sort of bit of Lincolnshire. So is this the start of a new career, do you think, Jim? I don't know, because I'm not, I, I still don't feel like a writer. I mean, I'm, it's, uh, it's, it's only something I do when I'm um, not, I haven't got any interesting acting jobs coming through. But between you, you've created just an unmistakable character in your first foray. No oh, good. I mean, I hope she's. It's, it's great for me. I, I love it. Love, love to see it. This, this book with Margaret on the cover. It's fantastic.